was brought up in this cult called the COG, mm -hmm. uh, the Children of God. And, uh, you know, I was very, well, music wasn't allowed. We weren't cultured. We right. weren't really allowed to watch movies. You know, we had a list of, like, specific movies that were okayed, um, that didn't conflict with any cult beliefs. Do you remember any of them? Oh, gosh. Um, well, you know, cartoons, you know, Sound of Music was on the list, which I still love. Don't. That's Don't so anyone... weird because that's about a group of people that escaped a thing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Weren't they afraid you were going to find the hills and be like, you know what? The hills are alive. Uh... <laughs> this is Tokyo tonight. Tonight. There we go. Hey. What's up? How are, How are you? you? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so oh. excited to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for coming on. Um, I loved, I got to listen to it uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Make Me Baby. I absolutely love it. It's incredible. You have an amazing voice, by the way. Aw, thank you. You're welcome. Um. I like that you're, uh, I like how comfortable you are. I love when people come on the show and are just like, like you're on a bed, which is just amazing. <laughs> it was like you, Joshua Raiden, and somebody else had just come on and they were just like, kick. one dude was laying down, I think eating chips. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was Art Alexicus was on his couch eating chips. And I was like, this is, makes me so happy. <laughs> well, so I've got an excuse, but I, I, you know, I'm in my, I'm in my boudoir. So I Very thought, nice. um, uh, so I thought I, I, I should get dressed too, too, too fancy, but I had like five leg surgeries back to back. Oh my goodness. And I'm wearing these stockings, which, are, which aren't the sexy kind. They're like right, the right. kind. Mm -hmm. So um, I figured this was going to be my, my attire for today. I have a feeling even if you were wearing the medical kind, they would still be sexy. I'm going to go out on a limb and I, say that. You know, I, I picked the sexiest ones they had. And this is a really <laughs> cool Japanese kimono, which is that is awesome. Absolute, absolute favorite. But yeah, no, it's it's casual, but but chic. I love it. It's so good. Um, one of the things I wanted to, I've kind of been asking everybody is this in general, like how are like how have you been holding up like through? I mean, we're basically coming out of the pandemic at this point. I think L.A. you're out in L.A. That's kind of opened up. Um everything seems to be coming back. Are you feeling like you're ready to get back out there and do some stuff? I am so ready. <laughs> uh, I am so ready to get out there and, and, and do some shows and make some noise. You nice. know, I was, I was really lucky to have had the opportunity to write with a bunch of people during the pandemic. You know, a mm. lot of the music industry was shut down and yeah. luckily for me, I had um, a lot of opportunities to work and songwrite on Zoom, which I didn't even know was possible, but hey, it, yeah. it worked. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I was writing with different people in New York, in Jamaica, in Germany, wow. in London. Like, it was just really cool. So I have yeah, been you... working, especially this year. Yeah. Last year was kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Are we going to get invaded by aliens <laughs> what is ha is this airborne like what is happening so the alien think, thing would have been so much cooler i know i would have preferred it every now and then i was always hoping to turn on the news and see that something was crawling out of the fucking ocean just to you know just to spice things up a bit oh my god don't get me started i have <laughs> seen so much weird stuff i don't want to really? swear i have seen so much weird stuff in the ocean like no, I'm not kidding. But so Shitty Princess and I, we were writing uh, and, you know, we we, we took a little smoke break outside mm -hmm. and we see this like glowing, I, I can't explain it. I don't know what it is, but it was like a glowing island. It was green wow. and it was so close to the shore and it wasn't, it wasn't, um, 
it wasn't moved by you know the waves or, or like the, the waves the, the motion of the waves it just was kind of stagnant slowly moving in the shallow part of the water and it was That's like creepy. green green neon and it was like an island it was like a a, a circle and it was i mean pretty large and wow. we brought a few people out so it's not just us and <laughs> no it wasn't the sativa i swear okay um I was yeah, no. <laughs> and that wasn't the first time. No, I've seen weird. I've seen weird stuff in the ocean. Yeah. We, you know, this last year for sure. I so. wish I could see cool shit. My friend took me out one time to the uh, like middle of the beach because she was like talking to some woman at one point who would like told her she could contact aliens. And then she was like, you need to come with me. And of course, she was gorgeous. So I was like, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. Uh, so I was just like, yeah, that's stupid. I'll go to the beach alone. It's fine. Um, and we went or whatever. And I didn't get to see anything, though. Like, everybody else has these experiences where they get to see shit. And, like, nothing's – I want to see it, but it's not happening. Well, who knows? You may get your wish. I need to hang out with you. I need to hang out with you and go uh, wherever you went to see that green thing of the ocean. You know, in Malibu, it's like – it's 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 – it was know. it was the, the most odd thing ever. I can't explain it. Don't know. Yeah. Did you like uh, getting to be able to like, because you said you were talking to people, like you got to talk to people and work with people in Germany, all that stuff. Do you feel like you're going to continue that kind of stuff now that like you've kind of figured out the streaming uh, collab stuff or, or not so much? Well, you know, so I have practically an album ready and nice. I'm I'm in between like doing sort of single 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 or single single ep album mm. i don't know that part i've i've i'm i'm just i'm 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 deciding on but i've got a bunch of really cool songs with so many cool people and awesome. um yeah i I've, I've got an archive so i'm i'm excited about that how do you feel I'm about the single to... stuff do you, do you normally like cuz that's a that's a uh, an interesting topic too is like I've talked to a bunch of artists who either love release, still like releasing like a full album. You know what I mean? That starts right. from beginning to end. But a lot of people that I talk to just do like to do the single thing because they feel like people's attention spans can't handle a whole album anymore. It depends. You know, I've heard both. I've heard um, releasing an EP or, you know, slash album is, is, has its, has its benefits because of, because of, you know, getting, 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 some sort of you know a lot more cred but mm -hmm. then you've got uh single releases that you know where you can really just campaign and just build a following and and you know if you do a drop a month um, right. is, is kind of what i'm seeing a lot you know everyone sort of focuses on a campaign each month to build like a nice amount of streams and followers and and hype so it just it kind of depends what you want to do and where you are at at your particular spot do you think you work better creatively like when you're working on when you get to focus on like one particular song and then you know you're going to release it or do you think you work better when you're knowing you're doing a collection like for an album oh gosh um <laughs> i don't know i kind of just see what the what the moment provides and what we're supposed to do and and i just kind of do it nice you yeah, know? so it's just feeling it. Yeah, going That's with cool. flow. You know, th these last two years, you kind of have to. I've I've learned a lot of patience. I've learned a lot of, you know, just to let go and kind of see where 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 things are leading and heading. And mm -hmm. um, I think being a control freak is great. It has its place, but also, you know, just just being intuitive and 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 uh, you know, just seeing where things lead is also really important too. Yeah. Would you say you're more of a control freak or do you like to just kind of like go with the flow? I would say I'm a little bit of both. Okay. That's a good balance to have though. You know, I think it's my star sign and my rising sign that are co constantly in conflict. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, so I know, you know, you had an interesting upbringing. Yes. Um, I'd love to know how, you know, uh, being in the cog or whatever it, and then how that kind of affected your music or where you learned to like appreciate music on that level. You know what I mean? Like while you were, how, cause you, you were in, yeah, you can talk about it. Well, so I was brought up in this cult called the COG, mm -hmm. uh, the children of God. And, uh, you know, I was very, well, music wasn't allowed. We weren't cultured. 
right. weren't really allowed to watch movies. You know, we had a list of like specific movies that were okayed, um, that didn't conflict with any cult beliefs. Do you remember any of them? Oh gosh. Um, well, you know, cartoons, you know, sound of music was on the list, which I still love. Don't, that's Don't so anyone... weird because that's about a group of people that escaped a thing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Weren't they afraid you were going to find the hills and be like, you know what? The hills are alive. Uh... <laughs> They're alive. <laughs> no. Um, so, gosh, uh, like Robin Hood and okay. um, gosh, there was this uh, straight talk with Dolly Parton and, and, oh and uh, James Woods. Right. I remember that movie. Yeah. Um, literally like maybe 10, maybe 10, maybe 20 movies were on the list and we just kind of rotated them mm -hmm. and we weren't really in touch with, you know, current music or, you know, what the charts were at the time. And, wow. you know, I, I, I really grew up without that. So, but at the same time we were, me and my siblings, we performed since we were really young. So, you know, we knew how to perform, we knew how to sing, but at the same time, we weren't very influenced by any kind of outside uh, culture. Okay. So, yeah, it was a gradual process of just learning things and just growing up and, you know, just just discovering just life and the world. And, you know, I, I was raised in India for the, for the beginning part. I was born in India. Mm -hmm. And then after India, my parents moved to the Soviet Union. So, like... Wow. As a kid, as a really young kid, I was used to like sandals and flip flops and that kind of thing. Uh, and then all of a sudden it was these crazy minus, you know, 20, 30 temperatures. Never Jesus. seen snow, never seen snow. We were just mm -hmm. talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, uh, you know, I just, yeah, experienced severe cold uh, temperatures. So that was very odd. Um, and then, you know, we traveled a lot uh and um after i always feel like people who maybe haven't seen snow i'm like I always wonder if they wonder if like you know especially when you're a kid if they just think god's like erasing the color you know what i mean like do you have like you know mm -hmm. like is that weird like they're just like everything's white like it's got to be weird right no the i remember the first time i saw snow it was in germany and i was about five mm -hmm. and um it was around christmas time and i saw yeah, just everything turned white and I just couldn't stop looking outside. It was just, wow. I just couldn't believe it. I, I guess my mind was so conditioned to India and then I saw snow and cold and it was just, yeah, we built, That's awesome. I remember my first snowman that I built. It was just very odd. <laughs> yeah, it was very odd. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, that's it's, you're like you're like the second person so far to tell me that they had never like experienced snow before, because they lived in a warm climate. So it's just bizarre. You know, it it happens. Do you know what were the first? Um, cause like I, you know, you said you couldn't experience like you couldn't listen to the top of the charts. Was there like somebody would sneak you music? Like how did you actually wind up? No, absolutely, absolutely. Nice. I would take a train and I'd hear something and I'd. I was fascinated with Michael Jackson. I think Michael Jackson was a huge impact on me. I remember um, being at this truck stop in Hungary out of all places. And it was like yeah. close to Budapest, I, I think. And, um, you know, we were, my family and I, we were all sitting down to have something to eat. And then I saw um, in this little tiny, the, you know, the tiny little portable TVs, um, I saw uh, Michael Jackson perform the Earth Song Oh, and yeah. I was just, I mean, I think it was like, I was probably six. And I remember staring at that uh, TV box and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. This <laughs> guy is so cool. Like yeah. that was, if anyone, if anything was cool, I was like, that guy is cool. <laughs> That's a cool dude. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I would, I would be influenced by friends of mine or, you know, they would want to show me something, but I would usually have to sneak it. I'd have to sneak, you know, listening to music. I sneaked putting on makeup. I sneaked coloring my hair. Wow. I wanted to do it all. I sneaked wearing high heels, boys, <laughs> uh, pot, cigarettes. It all happened. Did and you ever get caught? Of course I did. I once got <laughs> caught. And, no, I, I once got caught and got put on 
oh, like, I don't want to say house arrest because it sounds super severe, but I was, I was really, I was, I was in, I was in deep, in deep surveillance. Can I say shit? I want to yeah, say. Yeah. Oh, you can curse on here. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, oh, yeah. Go fucking nuts. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, was, I was in deep shit for about two years. Once I got caught, um, I was in Ukraine at the time okay. in Kiev and I had this room with a window that was like literally this big oh and it God. was at the, it was at the top. So it was like a window, which didn't open, but just at the very top of the window, there was one section that opened mm -hmm. and I figured out how to ninja my way out every oh night um, for about half a year. Wow. And I would, I would sneak. I would sneak, uh, sneak off to the local clubs and the local discos and dance to some good techno or some dance music, and um, oh, it was so fun. And you know, there were boys. <laughs> there was uh, pot, lots of pot. Um, you know, some drinks. I definitely experienced clubbing at a very, very early age. I have to say. Well, how so? You kind of knew that this was bogus. That you were in a cult, right? Mm hmm. How did you figure that out? Like from being a, from being involved in it in a young age, like what was the thing that turned you to go like, okay, this is bullshit, and I'm gonna well, go sneak out and go clubbing? Well, because it's fun. Because I was <laughs> I was just appealed by I, I just wanted to have fun. You know, right. I, think, I think any teenager is like, you know, just want to have fun. Like and sure. this is fun, boys, fun, dancing, fun, and um, you know, I just I just. Uh, I just had had so much fun being out and about and I was a really good dancer or I, I thought I was a really good dancer and I was also very tall. I was a tall uh, preteen or teen. Okay. I was very tall and um, I was actually just like a tiny bit shorter than I am now. So, uh, you know, nobody asked me for my ID and I just kind of got away with everything by just smiling. Wow. <laughs> nice. And then were you what what was the thing that got you out of there too because you said uh, i think you told me that basically uh you were signed by a major label that mm -hmm. wound up saving your life but was that while you were still uh involved in the cult or did it happen later like what was the thing that got you out of it so you know my siblings and i had been performing since we were kids and mm -hmm. we supported we supported the cult uh sometimes we had two or three shows a day so we were real seasoned performers and we did right. that really well. So when I thought about leaving, you know, there are these basic things that you don't even know you don't have, like a social security number. I didn't even know that one needed to have that to work. Wow. I didn't know, um, I didn't know how to get a bus ticket. Like I basic things I had absolutely no idea about, but I knew mm -hmm. how to, you know, perform for ten thousand people. And I knew I like it's it's weird. So I thought, well, you know, here we are making so much money for the cult. Like, why don't we, why don't we just leave and <laughs> then get signed to a major and mm -hmm. then pocket all the money? Wow. And, and that's literally what it, that's literally how I, I had this conversation with my siblings. And I was just like, this is what we're going to do. And they were like, but how? And I'm like, I don't know how, but we're just, you know, we're going to do some showcases. We're going to audition. We're going to do all these different things and look, we're fucking good. So, you know, we're bound to get a deal. And um, funnily enough, uh, we uh, showcased for every major label in Germany. And um, wow. it was practically yes, 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 yes. Everybody was a yes. And um, we then ended up, you know, choosing which one we wanted to go with. But yeah, it was hard because our parents were like, if you do this, if you endeavor in this, you can't come home and you're responsible for the rest of your siblings. So like Jeez. you leave, but all cults are kind of like that. They, they ostracize you and they make you feel like you're this outsider that has, you know, seen the world and now you are tainted and cannot come back. Or, right. I, right. I don't know. <laughs> did you ever feel like, did you ever feel like bad about leaving your parents though? Or did you know that it was just a bad situation? You had no choice. <sighs> You know, I did because I had two younger siblings um, that I really loved. And look, I love my parents. My my dad passed away. It's actually his birthday today. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, no. Uh, but I love both my parents. And, you know, I think 
leaving my younger, my two younger sisters was the most hard uh, thing for, for all of us siblings. And, you know, surely enough, you know, we got signed and, and I think, you know, both of our parents were really proud of us and they were proud of the choices that we made. And, um, yeah. And then eventually we, we started seeing everyone and, you know, it wasn't that, uh, so they got to see you actually, you know, come into your own and perform and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was so, I remember the first time I brought my two younger siblings to like this huge show I don't know it was like maybe 10,000 people wow and um my little sisters kind of like after the show they didn't look at us the same they were kind of like I don't know they're just like <laughs> okay you guys are like really cool and I'm like it's just you know this is yeah, yeah this is work this is yeah. what we do you know that's very so, sweet though I'm glad because it seemed like it you know you pulled yourself out of that and then they kind of realized you know you were more important than uh you know, whatever they had come into. Yeah, no, uh, that absolutely, absolutely. You know, but sometimes you just got to go with your hunch. And I had a hunch and I, and I knew it. It was just, I, I knew we could get signed. I knew we could get out. I knew we could, uh, you know, do something really cool. And um, luckily it all kind of just happened exactly the way I, I wanted it to. So, you know, I think there was divine intervention, of course. Right. Um. But yeah, you know, we, we all had so much fucking fun. It was ridiculous. It was like cult life secluded. And then, you know, we, EMI put us through interview training. So we learned how to, you know, just how to, how to, how to, how to, you know, cause we were, we were, we were very cult based and very cult like. Right. So we slowly got reconditioned into, you know, I, I want to say sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but um, <laughs> which is yeah. a much better cult if we have to much, ask anybody much, to much choose. Better, yeah, much better. Yeah, but uh, we slowly got reconditioned, and um, yeah, we were really good at it. You know, we were really good at uh, performing, and yeah. What was the thing that came first for you? Was it like writing music and stuff like that that you slowly started to realize, or was it the singing? Like, what was the thing that you know you realized? Oh my god, I'm fucking talented. <laughs> um. No, I think it was performing. It was performing. Um, you know, uh, we were all really good performers. And, you know, yeah, I mean, commanding a stage is is a task. It is mm -hmm. not for everyone. And there are some people that, you know, have terrible st stage fright and they just, you know, they just, they dread that part and they like the behind the scenes part more and they like, you know, studio and, and, and recording and producing and all that kind of stuff. For me, I love performing. Performing is just, you know, all the drugs I need. And nice. um, one yeah. of the viewers had asked, um, because you have such a strong, you know, stage performance and stage presence, do you ever feel transformed by the energy of the crowd? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a vibe. And, um, you know, it, you've got a break break through this barrier and it usually comes after the first or second song and mm -hmm. then once you've once you've broken that barrier you know you you're sort of in sync with the crowd and it's just it's magnetic it's magic it's you know it's what I, it's what i live for it's so fun. Yeah. it's so fun i yeah. know what you mean I, I love doing that kind of stuff too do you find that i always like asking uh performers you know, whether they're comedians or musicians or whatever, what do you do to calm down? Like, cause it is a high, like I have a hard time coming down after a show because sometimes I'll spend the entire night awake, you know what I mean? Or like just right. thinking of other things, you're starting to be creative. Do you have to like force yourself into like a calm, like to bring yourself down from that? Like, how do you do it? No, I, I, you know, I've been doing it since I was three years old. Um, for me, yeah, I, I usually just go, go to bed. I really do. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm usually just out, just out for teach out, me, please. Out. I can't do it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I partied so much as, as a younger in my, in my, in my younger teen years, I partied so much. I'm not a huge partier. So I know a lot of people that, you know, perform and then it's like a all nighter till 4am. That's, I mean, I can do that, but sure. it's, it's, yeah, it's not it's not my 
it's not my thing. I mean, you're basically you're just like, uh, because I'm not a child, John. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right, I guess if that's what you want to do. <laughs> if that's um, what you want to be about it. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, look, there are some. I've had some really cool parties, and there are some parties that are still yet to to, to even have. But oh, uh, you got any planned coming up? Anything I can get in on? Just well, I mean, you know, these last couple years have been pretty, uh, pretty dead, pretty silent. Yeah. The, um, you know, not too, not too many. I mean, there's the occasional like house party. There's, you know, in Malibu or um, when I when I went to London, there's these Kensington Park Garden parties, and I was just like, it was in lockdown. Like, how <laughs> you guys? No, no, I'm not kidding. So you switch on the news, you switch on BBC, and they're like breaking up these frat parties with like yeah. these poor college students. And then I got invited to this, to this uh, party at, at Kensington park garden, which is, you know, prime real estate. Mm -hmm. And they had a hired DJ and there's like, you know, you can hear, I, I was, I was arriving in my Uber and you can hear the party like blocks away. Right. And I was just like, you guys. And then, and they were, they were, they were, they were yeah, Uber after Uber that was coming in with 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 food and alcohol, and I was just like, "How does this happen? Right. How do you guys get away with this? This is just insane." Yeah, that's crazy. I know. But other, I other than that, that party and a few others, you know, it's not. It hasn't been too. Uh... Are you good at um like juggling like the Hollywood situation though? I mean, you know, because you have been performing for such a long time. I like the idea that after a show, it doesn't affect you in the way it might affect other people. You said you just kind of chill out and go to bed. But how do you navigate, like, you I know? I smoke weed. I smoke weed. I'll have, like, a, I'll have, like, a joint and, Perfect. like, watch a movie and then just kind of get, you know, just kind of get settled. Um, right. Juggling Hollywood. I mean, I've lived all over the world. L.A. is for sure the weirdest beast. Mm -hmm. um, it should be an island. I was telling you that. Yeah. It should be its own island. Um, I've lived all over, and this has been uh, an experience. Um, it's got its pros and cons. I mean, I do love Los Angeles. Um, I think you've got to leave every few months and just get out, even if it's just to the mountains or, you know, to 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 a to a nearby state or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, because because there's life there's life outside of Los Angeles. Right. And and people, when they're here, it's like, it's so, it's such a, it's such a bubble. And it's like, yeah, you get so consumed and um, with your circle of friends and just, you know, how people do things here. And I think it's really important to just get some, some time off and um, get some perspective and, you know, do some, do some, do some other things. And, yeah, it definitely you know. sucks you in in a in a weird way. I always felt like, uh, yeah. you know, that no matter what you were doing when you were there, you were always on the clock because everybody around you, everybody in line, everybody sitting down at a cafe mm -hmm. is talking about show business. They're talking about a right. script or a guy right. they knew or an audition they had or whatever. And you don't know who's around you. Like, you don't yeah. know. So you always have to kind of go out looking somewhat your bet you know what i mean like there's even those yeah, people yeah. who are really good at looking like they just rolled out of bed but they really didn't because yeah. that's an old that's their own look so it's it's just fucking weird it, it was very it was a lot of odd pressure to be there even for you know i mean it was my when i was living there it was like my first time like actually kind of living there so i didn't know what the fuck i was doing yeah no i totally get it i totally get it and i haven't met or haven't been to a spot or or a city that is like this um i love new york new york has doesn't have this vibe no um yeah new york doesn't care about you yeah. <laughs> like any of us you well, know what i mean like well, i like that so much i like that so much i mean you know the east coast you know they're 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 europeanized and yeah. um i'm you know i'm european so i i feel like there's more art and culture and nobody really gives a fuck right and um things are just so much more laid back and 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 just you know cool yeah, absolutely. Would you ever live out here? I would. I absolutely would. I have been thinking about it. Um, I have been thinking about it. It is on my mind. And it makes flights to Europe so much shorter, too. Mm -hmm. And the jet lag as well. Yeah. So I have. I'm going to pretend I understand and agree with you there. Yeah, no, totally. Whenever I go to Europe, no, I don't go to Europe, but <laughs> I wish I did. That'd be cool. 
Um, no, because I, I have all my family there. I'm literally, yeah. I'm alone here on this on this continent. I mean, out of my yeah. siblings and and is it hard? Siblings. Well, so my mom's in Germany and my youngest sister's in Germany and everyone else is in London. Mm -hmm. It is hard. Uh, I have the coolest uh, little niece who just turned three and I miss her so much. And, you know, little kids grow up so fast. And, you know, I see her, you know, twice a year. And, and you know, every time I see her, she's just that much bigger and talks. Yeah and does all these cool fun things and i have to facetime with her all the time to just make sure she remembers me and um yeah wow. no family for me is so important it's 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 number one awesome yeah I have family in england too and it's kind of the way we all communicate oh, cool. is facetime and stuff so it's it's kind of interesting because you cool. still don't get like i first of all they're going to be stunned that i'm not uh tall uh because i feel like you know when they're little kids and you're on facetime it doesn't matter like i think people <laughs> always imagine it but i'm like I'm pocket size, so it's going to be interesting. They're going to be taller than me eventually. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it is weird. I mean, I like the it, I like this because I get to meet people that I wouldn't otherwise meet. You know what I mean? Because it's totally. But it is weird when you see people in person for the first time after it. Okay. You know, like it's kind of a it's kind of like who, where do I look? Because uh, where's the ring light? And and then there's no ring light. Right. Yeah. Huh. Well, I think I think what you do is really cool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, but I'm glad you guys are thinking of moving out here. I'll have a, a spare room for you and Elijah. You guys can crash here. Aww. Um, no, I'm just kidding. You don't want to, you don't want to live in New Jersey. Um, <laughs> but it'd be nice. Um, how did you guys actually wind up, uh, meeting? Cause that's kind of like how, at what point in your career, like, did you guys meet on the road or what was that like? So, um, it was so odd. So I wrote this, I was signed to universal and um as 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 as, a, as my publishing company so they hooked me up with a bunch of different um sessions here in los angeles and i would fly back and forth and uh i wrote this song with this really talented man named jason miller who was signed to manson's label and oh, wow. he used to do yeah he used to do like you know rock and now he's 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 doing country i mean he's such a talented guy so we wrote this song and I went home, I went, you know, I went back to Germany and, and, you know, that was that. And I get this Facebook request on my private Facebook. Cause like I've got a band page and then I've got my private Facebook. Mm -hmm. page. So I get this request and it's this guy named Elijah blue and he has two profile pictures two. Uh oh. And let me tell you what they are. Okay. Okay. So there's one picture and it's his back in a phone booth. And then there's another picture and it's black <laughs> and white. And he's, I think smoking a, like a, like a cigarello or a cigar. Right. And it's like he's wearing glasses and it's just smoke everywhere. That's cool. Like, I did I know, but like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I kindly said, you know, um, and also, I thought this was maybe a, a, a what do you call it, like a catfish account? or fish? Sure. Catfish. Yeah, yeah, you have to be careful of those. So I was just like, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't add people I don't know. And um, he responded and he was like, yeah, you know, you wrote with my buddy Jason. And I was like, Jason, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I wrote with Jason. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but that was a while ago. That's so odd. All right. Um Okay, I guess he knows Jason. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll add you. Um, yeah, then we we started chatting and we talked about music and we talked about LA. I wasn't super excited that he was from LA. <laughs> um, I really wasn't. And um, yeah, because I because I I I had a I had a little boyfriend who was from LA who didn't see snow. The one I was telling you about. Oh, okay, that dude. All right, all right. I just I was so red kinda, flag goes up. So then yeah, wait a minute. So, that's that's a couple red flags. It's it's only two profile pictures. I know. Slid into your DMs. Yeah. Claims yeah. to know another person you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now fucking uh hasn't seen snow. It's not good. No, it's no, no. So good. no, so the, so yeah, this guy I, I saw for a minute hadn't seen snow. Okay. Um so uh so no, we started chatting and then we exchanged phone numbers, and I thought he was he sounded really, really um hot on the phone. And 
Yeah, no, we went out, we went on my first and last blind date, which was so odd because mm -hmm. blind dates are, are horrible, cringe and hard yeah. and just, um, so weird. So the first date was just awful. And, um, I was downing cosmopolitans cause I just felt like <laughs> I just, I was just like, what am I doing? Uh, you know, with blind dates, I just couldn't believe I was on a blind date. And I lied to my siblings cause I didn't want them to think that I went out with a complete stranger whom I never met before. Right. Um, so yeah. That's so how cults like, start. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. So I was like, yeah, no, if, if anything bad, if anything goes south, like my siblings will think that I'm with, with, you know, they won't even know where I am. So anyways, all these thoughts that are going on in my mind mm -hmm. and um, no, so the first date was just really cringe. And I thought, yeah, but I went home bothered. That's the feeling I remember. I remember going home and I was bothered. I didn't know if I liked him or hated him or a combination of both. I had no idea. I just felt bothered. Right. And um, on the weekend, he was like, yeah, you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to go out, go out on a, go out and get some food or something. And I was just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> we're really going to do that. Um, but yeah, after the second date, we were inseparable and, um, yeah, he's, he's a really cool dude. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have met him. Awesome. How so long have you been married? I've been married for eight years. Awesome. Cool. And, yeah. And together for 10, which is so odd. Wow. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, Elijah's amazing and he's the love of my life and I'm, he's my best friend. So we've had, we've had some really, really good times together. Nice. And the family dynamic has got to be pretty interesting and pretty cool. Like a perspective I've had too, because especially coming from where you came from, starting to perform there, right. having to navigate it on your own and then being thrust into, you know, that particular share is your mother-in-law and then it's also true. true. Yep. And great. Yeah. And I was going to say, so how, did you, how much of an adjustment was that for you, especially like mentally fit? You know what I mean? To like, you know, deal with all that. I don't know. I, I just kind of, you know, just sort of went with the flow. Um, you know, she's a really cool, uh, really cool lady. Um, she's been amazing to me and, um, I've learned so much from her. She's really, she's an exceptional, exceptional woman, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's been, yeah, no, it's, it's been almost, uh, 10 years that we, that we all know each other and it's been really cool. Nice. Yeah. And the, and just the, uh, basically is it the same kind of feeling for you as far as like just dealing with like press and stuff like that or anything like that, or cause you do seem very chill, like as far as like everything that you've been been through in general like you have a you have a pretty good outlook on stuff so it's impressive you know i i think being positive is is key to to life and um you know i've been through some crazy some crazy stuff in my earlier years in my in, yeah in, in 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 the cult but um you know it's a gradual it was a gradual process it wasn't just you know from one day to the next it was a gradual process of like you know, finding yourself and finding out certain things about life. And, um, yeah, I think it's, I think everything happens for a reason and it either makes you or breaks you. And, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's how I, that's how I, that's how I think. Uh, she retweeted something of mine once during like early Trump era. And when I tell you it fucking <laughs> exploded, I was oh not, God. I was not ready um for but i don't even know how she found it i have no idea i don't know how any of that shit works for the most part i'm like you said you're basically like a luddite with the, so i just like i fired something out there making fun of trump or something and she caught wind of it and it just like boom like the next day it was fucking everywhere and i was like you know being interviewed uh on some news channel asking me what it was like and i was just kind of like i don't know I was like, I was like, it was fucking awesome. What are you talking about? I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, it was pretty weird. And then like Rosie, like found it, tweeted it. Like it was, it was pretty nuts. And then, you know, it died down obviously, but 
I can't, you know what I mean? Like that's intense. Like that's a weird day for somebody and you're like just right. living it. So it's, it's crazy. I'm just going to well, go back to the, your weed point and be like, yeah, just to get high every day. That's fine. No, you know, oh my gosh, I used to be such a pothead and I'm going to, I'm going to be really honest with you. So I smoked anywhere from like 10 to 20 grams a day. Holy I, shit. Yeah. Me and me and Snoop Dogg. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, I love Snoop. I love What's Snoop the most Dogg. famous person you smoked weed with? <sighs> don't make me go there. <laughs> and, and you, I don't you brought up Snoop tell. Dogg and now I, I gotta know. And tell. No, I'm just because he's he, you know, he's known. For, yeah, of course. Of course. So much weed. Yeah. Um, Willie and Snoop I Dogg. I don't I don't smoke and tell. But so <laughs> I was, I mean, pretty much uh, smoking pot every and I, I shouldn't say pretty much because it was every day, right. every day for about five years until I was in London during this um, lockdown during the holidays last year. And I found myself, you know, because it, it's it's not legal over there, right? So mm, I found myself, yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess they get their stuff from Amsterdam. I want to say I don't I don't know, but I'm guessing. Probably. So, and you know, during lockdown, like that was, you know, they're you know, it's kind of scarce. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, I found myself going to the Victoria Station and just like, oh, I can't believe I'm this person doing this. So, right. um, yeah, when I got back here, I wanted to self quarantine for 10 days. And, uh, the first thing I wanted to do was, uh, order some, uh, some, some pot. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and I had this brown paper bag sitting on my, uh, hotel table. And I just was like, well, if I want to smoke, I'm going to smoke. Yeah. But, but today I'm so tired. I'm just going to go to bed. And then the next day I was just like, well, I don't feel like I need to smoke, but if I want to smoke, it's right there. And then I kind of just did that. And I don't really smoke anymore, at least not consistently. Nice. I'll have an edible once in a while with my friends or, you know, a puff on a vape, but like not, no, not what, it, not what it used to be. So, right. And yeah, not that everything. makes sense. I know a couple of people in my life who could calm down, who could stand to calm down with it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think after a while it just becomes a crutch and then you're just like used to, you know what I mean? Like it's, if you need to wake up with it every fucking day, I it guess, becomes like a thing. But, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge, um, advocate and I think that it has its place. It's, yeah. it's amazing for songwriting, amazing for, um, you know, just being creative. So it has its place. And I really thought that uh, I, th I thought it would really suck to not smoke pot every day, but I it it just kind of happened. Nice. And nobody nobody shamed me into not smoking anymore. It was just kind of like, well, I can do this. If, if right. I want to, I'll just do this again. If I don't, I don't. And it was that it was literally that easy. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of good medicinal purposes too. I mean, I know one yeah. of Tom on the show uses it and stuff. And my, some of my friends use it for the same thing too. I don't like, like occasionally I'm very social. Like I didn't drink for most of the pandemic, which I think people found like shocking, but like, if I'm not at a party or around other people, I, what am I going to get drunk for? It's no point. Like, it's no fun to get drunk by yourself. Like, right. I mean, I had my cat, but he's not going to do it. Um, <laughs> unless I just force him into it, uh, which is, animal abuse i guess um but yeah <laughs> i don't know um but tell me about live at san quentin too because that's fascinating oh, as well best uh best best days of my life so uh i flew out my brother david king who mm -hmm. is a up-and-coming producer in london nice. and um he's doing really well i'm so proud of him so I, I flew him out and we locked ourselves in uh, one of Cher's guest bedrooms and we <laughs> smoked a shit ton of sativa and indica. And I tell you why. Okay. Because when you're working with family or siblings, you don't want a dick measure and you just want, <laughs> you, ju you just don't need, you don't need penises in the room. So right. you stay at the door. So yeah. Um, we, we smoked a shit ton of pot and um, kind of did that for about a month and we came up with all these songs. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, here I had all these songs. I love them. I, I played them for, friend, for friends. I played them for family. 
And then um, I was like, okay, well, I've never performed on stage by myself before. Like I've performed, you know, plenty of times, but just not, you right. know, not, not on my own. Cause you're, you're so used to like, you know, the support of like different people on stage. Cause if you fuck up, then someone else is going to jump in for you. And there's all these different dynamics. And um, so I thought, well, uh, I've always wanted to perform at San Quentin state prison. It's legendary for all these um, incredible musicians and artists mm -hmm. that, that came in and, and did shows there. Like, you know, Johnny Cash, my father-in-law did it as well. Yeah. Palica filmed their video there. So um, I figured if I could uh, perform there and ace it, whatever that meant, I didn't even know what that meant in my mind. Mm -hmm. But if I could perform there and, um, you know, because I can't imagine that that's necessarily a pop audience, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. I yeah. Like if I could do that and, and come out successful, I, I could probably do any stage and that's, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I had this idea I contacted, didn't know how to get about it at all, at all, but I contacted Ted Lou's office who helped me with my visa and, um, he put me in touch with the warden and, uh, yeah, the warden asked me for, uh, some songs and, um, I was in touch with this amazing woman called Rafael Casale. And Wait, she, the warden had to like pre-approve your, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but the warden had to pre-approve a song list? Well, you know, everything had to be super kosher and super wow. pre-approved and everyone had to go through background checks. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. So, so yeah, no, I, um, I, uh, got my buddy Craig Tyler, who's from the band Crazy Town mm. and he was, uh, he was, he was, he was, he was, uh, my DJ for the day. And um, it was just him and I, and we had to sign this waiver that said that, you know, whatever happens, we, we're not, they're not responsible for, for us. For us coming. Right. Yeah. If they rush the stage, keep you as their prisoner, that kind of thing. They're like, Listen. I, I, oh, gosh, you know, That's yeah. And right. Craig's looking at me and Craig's like, you didn't tell me this. And I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know. It. <laughs> I, I am walking in this, this at the same time with you, dude. Right. So, um, no, um, we 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 did this show and uh it was just electric magnetic um i got two standing ovations and um you know I, I felt like i felt like i got everyone's respect and you know it wasn't like oh babe you know show us your tits or right you know, it wasn't that like everyone's like well of course you did because you were female and i'm like sure okay but um i i feel like we really connected um, and it was an amazing show. And yeah, after that, I, uh, they invited me back. So I thought, okay, well, nice. um, I want to do a, an even bigger show. So I told Elijah about it and Elijah's like, fuck yeah, I'm bringing Dead Z. Uh. And I had never seen Dead Z perform and Dead Z is this legendary cult. I mean, they are so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I had never seen, I had never seen them perform before. So this was a first for me too. So he was like, why don't I, why don't I bring Dead Z and then let me see if Queens and Stone Age want to come. Oh my so, God. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, Elijah hit up Troy mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, Queens of the Stone Age came in and it was just, I mean, it was one of those days you wish you were in prison. <laughs> <laughs> It was so cool. I, I have to say it was so freaking cool. That's great. I think, you know, all the boys were, you know, it was, it was a, an exceptional, it was an exceptional day. And I don't think any of us are going to forget it. And just the kindness and um, the incredible people that we met and the incredible stories that we've heard. And um, it was incredible. Yeah. It was a, it was a day to remember. And I'm, and I'm so happy to, have had those those two experiences. That's all. That's fucking amazing. I love yeah. I love that you went there and did that, and then came and went back again, and then brought uh, other awesome bands and stuff with you. Yeah. What is the vibe like after? Like after you guys get done, are you are the do they now, let you? Oh, okay. Now, 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 after that <laughs> show, I was right. on, I was I was at an all time high, and so mm. was everybody. Everybody wow. was just like, I think after we left, we were just like. Ah! 
like, oh, oh my god that just fucking happened um it was it was insane it was insane because it was just um a night to remember it was so uh, it was so incredible um yeah i'm so i'm so happy for i'm, I'm so happy and, and thankful that the boys came in there with me uh, and i mean queens and Desi, you know they're i mean incredible performers and to be on the same stage with everybody was just insane yeah it was would you ever insane. go back you know i i i have an open invitation to go back i've always always wanted to perform at the yard i want to perform on the yard like so for cool. for like half the population yeah um because so far we've just done it in the in their in two different venues but the two um venues that they had but i do want to perform um on the yard um i do or i am contemplating about doing maybe another prison because san quentin doesn't allow filming and they filmed, I've heard that. film and they did capture uh both performances but they uh broadcast it within the prison system in california okay wouldn't release it to the public wow which, which, and you can't get that? No, no. That's nope. fucked up. You know, look, it, it is what it is. And and I'm just glad that they uh, let us do what we did. Yeah. But that's why I'm um, thinking about doing a show at a spot, at, at a prison where, where where we can film and go home with um, the footage. Because it's, it's just, it's, um, you know... It's 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 something that I think everybody needs to experience one way or another. It's right. just um, it's so unique and um, it's such a it's such a cool experience. Yeah, I I, I mean yeah, it's got to be. I mean, especially the history and I'm doing that kind of thing. Um, I always wonder like what the requirement is for somebody in the prison to be able to go see a show. Like what kind of good behavior do you have to get on <laughs> like, yeah. to do that well, sort of thing? So I think you have to be um, somewhat on good um, behavior. Um, although the first time I performed, um, yeah, the venue was packed. And then the second time I performed, I asked who was here for my first show and it wasn't the same crowd. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I don't know what one must do. Uh, but I think, you know, anyone who's who's tricky is probably not going to probably not going to attend. Is there anybody like that you um, because you got to perform with two amazing bands? Is there anybody on your list or bucket list or anything like that? Somebody that you really like to work with that you haven't yet? Oh, my gosh. So. I have followed and uh, followed Grimes' career for years now, and I just think she's the coolest chick. She yeah. is rights, and um, you know she's so involved with everything that she does, and it's just um, it's so inspiring to see a chick do that. Mm -hmm. And you know she's just so creative. She's creative. She's artsy, and she's sort of unapologetically her, without being a conformist in a way you know she's got she's got tunes that are um very poppy but uh you can see her passion and her vibe in her art and i think that that's really cool and yeah she's that's really awesome because mm -hmm. you're working with a lot of interesting people now too um coming up people that you got to work with on the album mm -hmm. and now is there anybody else that's coming up that you can talk about or not really well, I've been working with a lot of people. Uh, you know, I'm working with Shitty Princess, which is this uh, song that I'm releasing on December 3rd. Yep. Uh, Mitch Moses, Vince McLean in New York. Um, I've been working on some really fun stuff with David Kahn and Denise Rich. Oh, nice. And Handel Tucker in Jamaica. Uh, Uli Beck in Germany. And... Um, yeah, I'm, I've got some some fun stuff up my sleeve. And and uh, Wednesday, who's here here in LA, she's an up and coming producer. Um, I'm I love working with chicks. It's just it's something that's so new to me. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I love working with Wednesday. She's just so, uh, we, we're, we, we vibe and we're on the same kind of level with artists that we like and music that we're into and sounds that we like to use. And that's awesome. Yeah. Do you find you, you like collaborating more than you like working by yourself? Oh, for sure. Because yeah. you get to vibe off of different people. And, you know, Elijah's definitely been um, a big inspiration for me. We've, we've, you know, he's, he's always given me his feedback and input on my stuff. And I really appreciate it. He's such a fucking genius, that man. Mm. <laughs> it's ridiculous. No, it's ridiculous. I believe you. Ridiculous. I just, no, he yeah. really is. Um, he's got a musical archive in his brain. It's, it's, I don't know how he, I don't know how he does it, but, um, he's so talented. Yeah. When you were doing make me baby, which is out, um, December 3rd, mm -hmm. uh, what was it like working with shitty princess on that? How was the writing process? Like how did that, cause it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I won't, you know, it was awesome that I got to see it, but it was a lot of fun. Working with her is just it's just fun. You know, we wanted to make sure that everything that we do together is fun. We're friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we would just hang out, smoke pot and vibe and, you know, listen to different beats and, you know, fuck around with different stuff. And, and it was, it was literally that simple. So working with her was, was, I mean, I have to, it's different with each person I work with. Um, but with her, it was just sheer fun. Nice. Say. Yeah. It wasn't planned or scheduled or like, now we're going to do this. It was <laughs> like, let's fuck around. So. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait until it's actually released and everybody gets to see it too. And No, me too. Yeah. I'm it's going to be excited too. Yeah. It's going to be exciting as shit. Um, I've got two more questions for you before we wrap up. We ask every guest these questions. So, okay. um, First one is, if you can go back in time and talk to your younger self, what piece of advice would you give that would help you today? Oh, wow. Mm. No. So I think I know. I, I think in your younger years, you're trying so hard to find out what cool is, you know? Yeah. Like I remember being 12 or 13 and thinking, and especially because I was a cult kid, I remember thinking like, oh, you know, or those kids are cool or those people are cool. And if I could tell my younger self something, I would say being authentically you is cool. Bitch. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> just be you. No, I'm not yeah. going to be you. Um, because there is only one you. And... Um, I think cool is being authentic and uh, you know, sure. We, we get different influences from different things, but um, everyone's unique. So I agree. Yeah, just, be, awesome. just be, just be you. And I feel like I might know the answer to this next one, okay. but you, you might change it up. Who knows? Um, so we ask everybody what had to end in your life, good or bad that led you to where you are today. What had to end? Ooh would have to end um well the cult had to uh yeah. end and um i think before something really good uh, sometimes you just need to take that leap and listen to your gut feeling and my gut feeling said exactly what i wanted to do and exactly how i was going to do it and it wasn't something so it's like a feeling but at the same time you're just you're also like i don't know how i'm gonna do it <laughs> but um, being intuitive and, and, and knowing what you're capable of and not taking no for an answer and um, yeah, just, just, just going for it. And I think a lot of people don't do that anymore. And that's, they, they need to remember that you just, you, you've got a goal, you want to do it, you can do it. You know, yeah. you just gotta, you gotta dive in. Awesome. Gotta Love take it. that leap. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, thank you so much. I mean, it's crazy. The time went by Aww. so fast, but um, you're amazing. Uh, can't Ditto. thank you enough for coming on. Thank you. Um, and I hope you come on and do it again, too, because I know you got more yes. stuff coming out and more yes. stuff planned. I'd love to. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Tom's going to pop in and get us.
out of here. Maybe he's not. I have no idea. If not, just hang around. Want to hang out bank stage for a bit? Totally. Awesome. And I will close this out. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. There he is. You. <laughs> no, I don't know where he is. I was like, where the fuck hey, is he? My friend, I am back. Excellent. Still on a highway somewhere. Yeah, I'm still on the journey to find the perfect guest for our 100th episode. So if everybody out there wants to write in, let me know who it is. I'm happy to put it on the list. I am uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be in Vegas searching for the perfect guest. We're going to see who we can grab out there. But I think I'll have a much better connection in that hotel. It's supposed to be a very good suite. <laughs> Excellent. I... Although I really enjoyed today's show. I hope everybody else did too. I hope everybody got a chance to see the whole thing. But if you didn't, make sure you check us out on YouTube at John Pulver on Dystopia tonight. Or you can listen to it. Even though it didn't have this sultry voice of mine, you can still <laughs> listen to the entire episode on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you can see this podcast. I'm looking forward to seeing you. And we have so many fun new things coming up. Tomorrow night's going to be yet another great show. Yep. Can't wait. Trans Siberian Orchestra uh, tomorrow night. Going to be a lot of fun. I feel like it's a cool little lead into Christmas, which is cool. And then we have uh, Stevie D from Buck Cherry to close out the week. Oh, you're a crazy bitch. I love that. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I love that. That's, that was a nice segue, a little plug for them. All right, guys. Have a good night. Peace. Oh, did my, did my stuff, did I cut out? You cut out, and then I just sat oh. here while there was no exit playing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and done. And then fucking Fuck. nothing happened. <laughs> no problem. I am going to say goodnight to everybody. Thank you, John, so much for carrying the show this evening. And we will see everybody tomorrow night. Good night. Peace.